not the way the Raiders wanted to leave Tennessee. They lose this one 24-22 to the Tennessee Titans. Welcome in to Raiders game day, everyone. I'm Amber Theo Harris, along with former Raiders James Jones and Eric Allen. And here we sit again, disappointed after a spectacular final drive, two spectacular catches by Matt Collins to put the Raiders in position to win, not able to convert, convert on the two-point conversion. And now the Raiders fall to 0-3. Eric, what is your reaction to this loss? Missed opportunities, guys. I mean, all over the football field, and you just can't have that many opportunities to capitalize maybe on a third down or, or get a guy down and miss those opportunities. They will come back to haunt you. We haven't been able to put the pieces together, guys, yeah. for this team, first half, second half, the drive, defense playing good, one half, offense stumbles, now the offense plays well, defense can't get off the field. So, again, got to put it together and stop missing those opportunities to make those big plays. You're 100% correct. You cannot play two quarters and expect to win in the National Football League. It's too many good football play teams. It's too many good football players, right? Last week, right, it was a really good first half. Didn't play so well in the second half. This week we came out not so good of a first half, balled out in the second half, and you find yourself coming up short in both those games. You cannot do that. They have to find a way to put together four quarters if they want to get a W. And you have to imagine the message is going to be consistency like it was last week. Here's what's on tap for Raiders game day tonight. Full game highlights coming your way, plus player and coach interviews. We'll hear Josh McDaniel's response to the loss. James Jones and Eric Allen will give us our offensive and defensive highlights. And uh, we're going to pick them for Monday night because uh -huh. Monday night football is it's coming up tomorrow. But let's get to the game action. Both of these teams coming in 0-2 and needing a big win. Josh McDaniels looking for his first win as a Raider. Titans opening drive, and you know they want to get Derrick Henry involved early. And the screen pass <laughs> almost bobbled, but he does what he does. He gets the first down 23 yards. He spent the whole week focusing on tackling this you man know, in the backfield. Right. Now he's getting screens now and stuff. Getting passes. That, but that's an excellent <laughs> job by this coaching staff. As you can see, Derrick Henry coming downhill again, but they threw him the ball more than they usually throw him the ball to get him in some space, and he made them happy. But they go to Jeff Swaim once they're in the red zone for the touchdown and the Titans go up 7-0 early. The opening drive 75 yards, 12 plays. Raiders opening drive here they go. No Hunter Renfro. So Mac Collins mm. looking for a big day on third and 15, 20 yards. Take another look. And Matt Collins got to keep running, though. Man, he, he got to stay. those guys, He got to stay on his feet and dip his shoulder. Man, I was just in the <laughs> weight room. I was in there with him. He a big boy. Dip your shoulder, get up in there, and make that play. D. Waller coming across the field right here. We got two guys in the same area, yeah. which means somebody got to catch it. Oh, man. Right off of D. Waller. Another miss opportunity. Miss opportunity. Miscommunication. <laughs> tough in the red zone for the Raiders today. So the Raiders would have to settle for a field goal. Daniel Carlson, good from 21 yards out and the Raiders pull to within four. The Titans next possession. Ryan Tannehill play action pass deep to Robert Woods 41 yards and just like that the Titans are back in the red zone. Robert Woods is an unheralded receiver can do it all run the football run those great crossing. Yeah. Two plays later Derrick Henry up the middle from one yard out and the Titans go up 14-3 early in the second quarter. So the Raiders get the ball back and they waste no time getting downfield. Derek Carr, Foster Moreau, he's been a huge part Man, of this offense early in the season. He was stepping up. Love yes. to see Foster Moreau get it Yes, down. and Derek Carr all game long. He was dropping dimes all game long. Right here you see a little trickery. 18 good old yards to 1-7 Devontae Adams. Raiders got it moving on the offensive side of the ball. Again, Raiders in the red zone. Here we go. Devontae Adams with the catch. Five yards for the touchdown. Raiders cut the lead to four. Carr was perfect on that scoring drive. Uh, five for five. Ooh, he put that twinkle, twinkle little star on him <laughs> and got up in the inside of him. Touchdown, seven points. Titans third possession, and guess who they give it to? Up the middle, Derrick Henry for 24 yards. Henry had over 100 scrimmage yards in the first half. Two plays later from the one with the quarterback's sneak. It's Ryan Tannehill for the touchdown and the Titans up 21 10 Titans scored on all three of their first possessions. scored touchdowns on all three of their first three possessions. Second half the Raiders this scramble every time Derek Carr got outside the pocket today. It was a big play or a penalty. Hopefully he turns the tape on and says when I make some plays like this with my legs it's big time plays right here. You see him on the move again. Fourth and you one. Know, fourth and one. Gutsy call. Mac Hollins again. Derek Carr out the pocket. Pick up a first down. 
New set of downs gives this drive life for the Raiders. Thanks to that play, uh, Raiders threatening third and fourth. And uh, Colton Miller called on a false start, five yards. Third and four, manageable third down make here. Yep. Now we've got to settle for a field goal. And they scoring touchdowns in the red zone. We settling for field goals. We know what that equals, man. We not, it's not going to get done. We got to find a way, get a little bit more creative in the red zone to find some ways to put up some points. Raiders are down 11 now. Titans get the ball back. Raiders defense needs to make a play on third and 11. Ryan Tannehill drops back and he finds Deron Harmon with the pick. <laughs> not the man he intended. This was a huge momentum shift. At least it felt like that. Big play by Deron Harmon. Yeah, Deron Harmon, I mean, he read the quarterback's eyes. He came and got that one. He looked like the receiver right there. He ain't have to slide to get it, nothing. He just ran up underneath it like a punt return. That and, pressure, uh, that pressure yep. up front forced him to throw the ball a little earlier and just a great uh, break on the ball here by Harmon. Everyone's covered up. Everybody blanketed. Nice. Stay in that 55 coverage, cover two man. Gotcha. That's his 22nd career interception. He's just a few short of our very own Eric Allen, who has 54. Just a little, few. little way to go. <laughs> Couple. But we're still happy about it. We'll multiply him. <laughs> All right. So the Raiders are first forced to punt, but Matt Woo! Collins makes a great play <laughs> down in the ball at the one. He does it on special teams man. as well as offense. Matt Collins, MVP. I don't know what he exactly. ate, but he did it again. <laughs> <laughs> now in the he fourth quarter. Here, right here. Go. Still down 11. Darren Waller gets his head knocked off, holds on for the 17 yard reception. So now it's third and three on the six yard line. Derek Carr says, hey, I'll go to Waller again, uh. but nope. Intercepted by Kevin Bayard. And the Bayard returns the ball to the 20 yard that's line. Take big. another look. That's a big play in this ball game because that's a touchdown right there. So now it's 20 to 20 to 24. The Raiders got some action. You know, D. Waller, no, he wish he can have that one yeah, back right there and make sure. that play, yeah. you know. Yeah, it could have been a three or four point game there if they score the touchdown and go for the two point conversion. So big missed opportunity. Fast forward to late in the fourth. Raiders only down by eight with under three minutes. And uh, Josh Jacobs for 11 yard There's first that guy down. Again. 28 got to get the ball more. <laughs> 28 got to get the ball more, Derek Carr. 28 got to get the ball more. Incompletions. It's fourth and 10. And the Raiders take a delay of game yeah. penalty. Thought this gonna be they knew the play that they was oh. going to. Well, they, you know, they knew they was going to throw a bomb. They did a little bit more room. Yeah. They did a little bit more room, a little bit, you know, a little bit more time to, to communicate. Fourth this. and 15, JJ said in the green room, they got this. <laughs> and they did to Mac Hollins with the play of the game. 48 yards down the right sideline. Keeps the Raiders drive alive with a first down. Take another look. That is yeah. a dot. Corner playing 12 yards off. 12 yards Mac off. Get still on. ran by, but look at the ball, though. <laughs> Oh, huh. perfect. Oh, my goodness. Bread basket, combine catch over the shoulder. Matt Collins let you know I'm him. Yes, you were him today. So, fourth and 10 looking for Waller, but a holding penalty would keep the lot to drive alive. So, they get a new set of downs. They would not succeed on three of them. So, here we are in fourth and goal from the nine to Mac Hollins for the touchdown. Yeah, he too little. He let him know he too little. This big boy football out here, man. You see all the fans out there? This big boy football, I'm you so too happy little, man. Mac Hollins, man. That's how you go climb the, climb the mountain yeah, right man. there and go get that rock. Yeah. Fight for that. Could have even been an and one. P.I. Yeah, you too small. Ma. You know, sorry. Why do you have to do that too? Now the Raiders <laughs> are only down two points. They go for the two point conversion, looking to force overtime. So here we go with a minute 14 left in the game, two seconds left on the game clock, play clock, and it's no good. They're not able to convert the two-point conversion, and so the final score, the Raiders 22, the Titans 24, the Raiders fall to 0 and 3. So this is a point where they need to look forward and say, I, I know that you have talked about this, you can't look at the 0 and 3 at this point because all the numbers are devastating. If you look at the percentages of making the playoffs, if you look at the percentages of making the Super Bowl, that locker room has got to look itself in the mirror at this point and be positive going 100%, forward. 100%. And I don't care if you 0 and 10. It's all about getting the first one. So how can we get the first one? When you're in the locker room, ain't no need to heads down, yeah. get your head up, right? We're going to go, we're going to correct this. But it's all about getting the first one. Once you get the first one, I'm telling you, once you get the first one, a lot of stuff can change. Yeah. People are going to 
to lose in this division, right? You never know what's going to happen. Get the first game and you're going to be fine, right? We and feel like so we close. have. Is that what we are. take away from this? They're yeah. so close. They're, There's so they, many good things are. we see. Yeah. And again, when you lose like this, like you lost last week in the first week, it's all a learning process, right? You have to learn how to win, and that's what they haven't been able to do as of yet put it all together. So again, you go back over as a player and you go back over your week of preparation, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you're doing the correct things, if the things that you're studying on film, you're seeing in the game, can you recall those things quickly? Are you processing the information correctly? All those things are under question until you win. Yeah. Once you win, now you say, you know what? Yeah. That week I had was outstanding. Whatever I did that week, I'm going to continue that. So right now, you're still searching, still trying to search for that right uh, method of getting ready for the game. Yeah, it's All time right. to find it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to gotta find, find it. it. Time now for the final game stats presented by Sports Water. So the Raiders lose 22 to 24. A rushing yards, Josh Jacobs and company, uh, Brandon Bolden involved as well, 96 yards on the ground. They were able to hold the Titans to 109 rushing yards. You would, that's not a bad thing with with Derrick no, Henry, it's, but it's he not, hit them but, with a lot of reception. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of yards kinda, from that's scrimmage. That's kind of the thing there. He hit us with a little bit of the passing, and I'm pretty sure that was in the game plan. I would like to see our rushing numbers over 100 yards yeah. almost every week. That shows you that you kind of we can count on the run. I think we can. And the turnovers, the Derek Carr turnover came in the end zone at a costly time. And then you look at the turnover uh, on the other side with the Titans not able to capitalize yeah. on the Deron Harmon pick. So, and then in the red zone, yeah, two that's for six the, in the red zone. That's what I'm looking at. That red zone right there, and obviously the interception happened in the red zone as well. But in the red zone, two for six. You down there that many times, you have to find a way to get touchdowns in that red zone if you want to. Yeah, that's one of those areas of the field that we weren't great at last year. We thought this year, you know, with an experienced uh, Derek Carr, with a coach like Josh, with all those great receivers and tight end, we would be more efficient in the red zone. And something we didn't see also was conversion on third down. One for 12 on third down, 8.3%. Yeah. That's not how you win games yeah. in the National Football it's League. Crazy to, uh, it's crazy to think the Raiders even had a chance to be in that game. With all, with those, with all those yeah. numbers like that, knowing that you was bad on third down, knowing that you was bad in the red yeah. zone. They were 50% on third yeah, down. They were 50% on third down. Yeah, the Titans 50% on third down. You still have an opportunity to win that ball game. It is some positives, but they got to start making one more play than the other team to get the W. Well, a huge positive has been the emergence of Mac Hollins. He's a wide receiver that came uh, in free agency just trying to make the 53-man roster, and now he's a captain. Now he's making plays on special teams, but more importantly, he's making plays on offense. Man, you love that. And all, all summer we were talking about, hey, they have all these players. You know what? You're going to be one-on-one -on -one against someone. What are you going to do? This is what he did today. 158 yards of it, mm. continuing to make big plays. Love the isolation with him, going to him, having the confidence to get him involved in the game. And for me, what stands out is he had 10 targets, eight catches. That yeah. means you Efficient. are winning. <laughs> that means you are getting open and you are winning on your routes, and Derek Carr is finding you. Eight catches, 158 in the tank tank. <laughs> Mac Collins had himself a day out there, man. No, I'm proud of him. That's how he's supposed to play. And he's, he's a leader as well. Yeah. Uh, to be elected captain by your head coach uh, when you're new to the team. I know that he was big last week in trying to keep the head up of the team. He comes out and has a big game with 158 yards. And important, there were a lot of these plays where it was pass interference. And yeah. he was one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. It was it was mano a mano as far as physically yes. shedding the, the, D bat, the uh, defensive back and being able to and win we, those battles. And we've all stood next to Mac. He's a big He's boy. not a small guy. He's a big boy. <laughs> He's a big dude, right? At 6'4", so, how much does he weigh? Yeah, 6'4", 282. 280, you're going to win <laughs> a lot of those battles. He's going to be sometimes yeah. on a number two or yeah. number three cornerback, mm -hmm. and he's going to have chances like this throughout the season. Yeah. And if we can continue to count on him, I mean, this is a, how big of a catch yeah. was that? That was huge. And I mean, you know what? Yeah. I mean, that is just humongous. He's confident about what he's doing. And you love the fact that he's that was, oh, yeah. That's what I was talking about. Just physically <laughs> dominating right. another human being. And with Devontae Adams, the way that they're getting some safety help and rolling yeah. safeties over, yeah. he's going to have those opportunities. Absolutely. And that's the only way. If you love Devontae, you make plays like that because that's the only <laughs> way you're going to get him open. Right? They're going to say everybody else beat right. us. We got we to gotta send some safety help over you're here. Exactly or we're going right. to keep getting beat up by these dudes and trying to stop Devontae. So you're going to help Devontae when you got Mac and those guys over there making plays. So he got to keep it going. He's going to keep getting more opportunities. DC, you see you making plays like that? There's only more coming.
All right, when we return on Raiders game day, we're going to catch up with Mac Hollins, who joins us from Nissan Stadium. That's coming up next right here on Raiders game day. Raiders game day is brought to you by America First Credit Union, the official credit union of the Las Vegas Raiders. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill. Welcome back to Raiders game day. The Raiders drop another one. They fall to 0-3 after losing to the Tennessee Titans on the road, 24-22. But a big game from Mac Hollins. He had eight catches, 158 yards, and one touchdown. So, Mac, I know the emotions of losing this game, very difficult. Take me through that last drive, though, and the two huge plays from yourself. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, a, a, a last – opportunity for our team to be able to put ourselves in a, in a place to, to tie the game and I was fortunate enough to have the ball come my way uh, and make some plays but not enough to uh, to win the game. Mac James Jones here now I know Hunter Renfro was out a um, lot a lot of attention going to Devontae Adams was this something that you and Derek Carr kind of talked about like mm -hmm. hey man you know be ready stay ready because you know some opportunities could be coming your way for you to have a big day uh, I don't think it's something we talked about I think that's you know you 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 take away Hunter and you just look at the numbers and obviously somebody else has to step up uh, and Devonte is going to consistently you know, 90% of the time, get get two guys covering or some sort of two, and other guys have to be able to, to step up and make plays, and it happened to be my day today. Mac, you're an extremely confident guy. Is it something uh, about the matchup with a certain DB that you thought you could take advantage of today? Uh, I, I mean, I think whoever I go against, I have, you know, the utmost respect for, but that doesn't mean I fear anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. Um, but any confidence I have comes from, you know, January to to September. You know, in, in training, that's where that's where players get their confidence from, from the work they've put in. So it's not like I came this week and was like, "Oh, Hunter's down. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to be a, a great player all of a sudden." Uh, you know, this is a lot of work that's been put in, and you know, obviously we have a lot more work to do, and I have a lot more work to do to make sure that uh, we come out with a W instead of an L. Mac, how's the locker room? You know, it's easy to kind of get down on yourself. You know. Lost some close ball games, you know, kind of gave up one last week to come in this game and to be this close. How's the locker room? I know it's easy to get down on yourself, easy to kind of put a little doubt in there and, you know, get discouraged a little bit. How's the locker room? Yeah, it definitely hurts. I mean, nobody, nobody comes to, to games and says, I, I hope we potentially win. Like, you're, you want to win. And losing hurts because you put in a lot of work in all week and all offseason to get wins. And to not get it is uh, – is a letdown, but like I said, unfortunately, I had to say last week, you can only boohoo about it for so long. You know, the, the season's not over, not nearly over. Um, nobody cares what the percentages are of, of making playoffs or whoop-de-woo. Come out next week and prepare and get a win. The good news is we see these explosive game-changing plays on offense that you guys are capable of. But then we look at the little things like one for 12 on third down. When you're in this situation, when you're 0-3, do you kind of have to go micro in the sense that you look at those little things and try to tweak them at practice? Uh, I mean, I don't think the 0-3 has anything to do with it. We, we should be looking at those things from the beginning, and we have. You know, Coach McDaniels has always put an emphasis on penalties, turnovers, um, and doing the right thing, they, and, and it's it's simple, but it's not easy uh, to to not commit penalties, to not turn the ball over, to have good ball security, um, you know, to to play smart, uh, and you know, it's, it's like I said, it, it, it's simple, not easy to just continue to do the right thing over and over, and that's something that as players we have to to speak on and 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 take care of it a, a coach can only take you so far a coach isn't between the lines at the end of the day it's on it's on the the players to to make sure we're taking care of business well mac i know as a captain you take your job so seriously and i know you'll be instrumental in getting the team ready to go uh, against the broncos next week thanks for joining us mac we appreciate it thank you so much i appreciate it y'all
Yeah, and so Mac has definitely been a highlight for the Raiders early in what's been a tough season. Another highlight has been the way Josh Jacobs is running the football. He only had 66 yards today, 13 carries, but that was 5.1 yards per carry. We keep looking at his yards per carry, and he's one of the most productive backs in the NFL, so we'd like to see more. Is that fair? Yes, we want to see more, Amber. And again, what it comes down to oh. is being able to take advantage of all those other people around you. Just like Mac took advantage of having a, a one great day, Josh needs to continue to run. Four quarters, we need to see some input. We need to see him in a screen game. He needs to have the ball in his hands in critical situations to help this football team really solidify itself and be a, be a more of a dictating presence on the football field. EA, you play defense. When you play too high safety, that means you <laughs> want a team to run the football, right? right? That the Raiders, they play too high safety and send safety help over Devontae Adams the whole game. If you want to get this passing game going, keep giving the ball to 28 because now you have to bring that right safety there. down in the box. And now you can't double Devontae Adams and it's one on one. You can't double Waller. It's one on one. But until you start giving Josh Jacobs 20, 22 carries a game, so they have to step down and that. walk down. Look at the yards after contact. <laughs> and walk down there in the box to be able to put an extra guy in the box. Now DC gets up to the line of scrimmage and he say, check, check, check. Let's get in our passing routes because they got one down in the box for exactly. Josh, and now we got one-on-one -on -one coverage. But if you give them 13 carries, they thinking in themselves as a defense, they not going to run the ball. That's right. Right? If you're going to only give it to them 13, you're not going to run it. We're going to sit in cover two, take away the explosives, because they're not going to give it to Josh. Yeah, you got to dictate to the defense sometimes, and we haven't done that so far with Josh Jacobs. And it's Josh. okay to do that late in the game in the red zone, by the way. That's <laughs> right, Amber. When you got a little under <laughs> two minutes. And it's okay to go first down here, do Josh. Yeah. Second down here, Josh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Third and short here, Josh. It's okay. Josh, go get one. Yeah. We're in first down. Let's get into something else. It's okay to do that. Big, big Josh fans. Uh, Derek Carr uh, had a chance to speak after the game. Here's what he had to say. Derek, there's a uh, mental toughness that's required to win at this level consistently. And um, you know, between some drop balls, penalties, things like that, uh, do you feel like you guys are playing with the necessary mental toughness right now? Um, not, not for what it takes to win, you know. Uh, you know, we, uh, you know, the penalties down the red zone, um, the other stuff, whatever. Uh, you know, that's it. We, we have to be better, and if we're not, it's gonna, we're going to have a sucky feeling after every game, you know. So uh, you, you try your best to do it the right way in practice, and if you don't do it right in practice, you can't expect it to go right in the game. And uh, we got to look at that, and each man as an individual say, okay, then I got to be better at this, this, and this. Needs to be better at practice. Um, I, I thought we had a good uh, good week. I thought, but there's cer certain areas that um, if something just keeps showing up, certain guys you gotta address it, you know. And so, um, you know, so it doesn't become a problem in a game, right? But that's for everybody, you know. But you know, to answer the the first part, you know, I, I think that we just the mental toughness comes from doing it in practice. Then you have the confidence to go out there, and then you feel tough about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was going to ask that because is it more frustrating that you haven't been able to get over the hump or because there's some redundancy in why there's like similar reasons of preventing you guys shooting yourselves in the foot a little bit with the penalties and the lack of execution? Yeah, um, yeah I think just the overall feeling of losing is what um, is what breaks my heart, you know, and um, you know, I, I feel I, I know I've seen what it takes to win at this level and I, I see what our coaches are saying every week and um, you know, that's why we, I believe in what we're doing, you know, but we don't have the results yet. And so that, that's always hard. So you just got to keep reminding the young guys, they don't know any better either, you know, that trust me, like if we just, if you just do it the way they're saying, you do it the right way, when, it, when you show up on Sunday, it'll get done. There, there were a few miscues in the past game, whether it was giving a drop or a ball not being where a guy could get it or a ball being bad at the line of scrimmage. Was, was there something in particular that was off today in terms of the passing game chemistry or was there something that just happened? Um, I think we'll just have to look at it on film, you know, uh, a batted ball or whatnot. I, I don't, you know, at the last screen, I don't, I don't, I'd have to see it. I'm not watching them, you know, um, you know, and then we had a few, you know, when, when, you know, me and me and a certain guy that we connect and we've connected on a lot of passes in this league and, and today we, they didn't go our way, you know, and so we'll take a look at them on film and why and uh, all that um, and you try and be better from it, but. Um, but I felt like we were still be able to hit some big plays in the passing game, and I didn't feel like it was like uh, like shut down or anything like that.
What do you see on the, the two-point conversion? Obviously, this could be a lot different conversation. You guys have that one. That they just make a good play on that, or what do you see there? Yep. Yeah, so the well, the backside safety they had Bayard on uh, on Darren. Darren, you know, had a move to get inside, and the backside safety was coming, so I had to throw it back shoulder, or else that guy would have picked it, and we would have had a. Same same conversation. So I uh, just trying to give Darren a chance high in the back of the end zone, and we didn't hit it. And there is a lot of frustration when you do see the yes. big play ability, and you see the big plays happening. Not yeah. just the ability. Uh, he he's never going to throw anybody under the bus. But that Darren Waller had his hand on the ball, wasn't able to pull it in. Keenan Callen with uh, uh, Keenan uh, Cole with oh. the drop in the in the uh, end zone. So there was. The plays were there. It's just a matter of one or two plays that were negative being positive. And yeah. that's what makes it pretty frustrating. But I know that uh, one of the positives was the way that Derek Carr was able to step up in the pocket and make plays happen with his legs. So yeah. when we come back, James Jones is going to break that down for us. We're going to go offensive spotlight with J.J. coming up next. The Raiders have lost this one 22-24 to the Titans. Welcome back to Raiders game day. So the Raiders lose this one 24-22 to the Tennessee Titans. They fall to 0-3. But uh, EA, we saw some positives. And one yes, was, was Derek Carr was moving around. Outside that pocket a little Outside bit. Outside that pocket. <laughs> to talk more about it, let's send it over to James Jones for the offensive spotlight. What's up, JJ? I appreciate y'all sending it over. I'm going to break it down because this right here, man, this is really what? I don't know how much money you make. A hundred plus something million dollars. I'm going to show you what my brother from another mother look like. All right, listen to me, DC. We need more of this. Right here, roll this tape right here. Play one, DC getting outside the pocket. When he gets outside the pocket, get a receiver some more time to get open. What do we get right here? We don't get the catch. We get panicked by the DBs, pass interference. Then right here, I don't like what I see. Get a little pressure up the middle. Use my legs, take off up the field. You know what that equals. First down for the Raiders. Derek Carr right here again, stepping up in the pocket. Stepping up in the pocket, delivering the ball. Tight end breaks a tackle, another first down for the Raiders. Every time Derek Carr moves around in the pocket, a play is made. Again, let's step up in the pocket. This is a dime, y'all. Let me see. This is a dime right here. I know Max Collins had a day, but a lot of these was dimers. In the bread basket, big play down the field to Mac Hollins. Derek Carr, listen to me, man. When you move in the pocket and get outside the pocket and make plays with your arm and legs, you're a bad man, my brother. And you have to give credit to an offensive line. This was the seventh different combination. Seven. That Derek Carr has played in front of already this year. We saw the newbie, Alex Bars, from the practice squad. He played at left guard today. Then, speaking of new guys, you have two rookies on the offensive line, and Dylan Parham and Thayer Munford Jr. Jermaine Illuminor move from right tackle into right guard. and. Good protection of Derek Carr. Only one sack, only one sack today. I know, only third, one sack, three, and that's an improvement, especially for a new offensive exactly. line. Three, three, seven different offensive line rotations. That's so, a lot. So, again, that goes to my point over there, too. You help the old line as well. Exactly. Once you move and get outside the pocket, step up in the pocket, you help those big fellas. That's right. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about the defense. Big improvement in the second half. EA with the defensive spotlight coming up next on Raiders game day. This segment has been brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Las Vegas Raiders. Welcome back to Raiders game day. One of the reasons that the Raiders were still in this game late in the fourth quarter was Patrick Graham and the defense making some adjustments in the, in, in the half, coming out in the half. And to talk more about that, let's send it over to our defensive guy, EA. What's up, EA? Hey, I tell you what, guys, it's all about defense. First half wasn't so well, right? You come out in the second half, you get that speech by the defensive coordinator, right? Got to get it together. Here you can see third down, must win situation for our football team. We got to get off the field somehow, give the ball back to our offense. We'll roll the tape here. Tannehill here is going to be under max pressure. You get it? Max pressure. Yeah. <laughs> so again, Max always providing pressure. Great job getting upfield, forcing him to throw early. He's not able to process it all. And then we get the big pick for the second week in a row, right? Harmon comes up with a big impact play. We love that. We we'll go to the all 22s. Watch here. Harmon playing that deep half. Understanding the route principles, understanding he's getting, we call this kind of like a sail route where he's going to have an outbreaking route. Tannehill has to throw it. The process is not fast. 
and he comes up with another big play. You love that fact about him. He's always making that great play right when you need it. We need more of this, right? We need more INTs from Harmon and the rest of that secondary. And if we can all tie it together, first quarter, second quarter, third, and fourth, we're going to be routing the money and get that W next week against those Broncos. Well, the two halves for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, they came out and dominated offensively. Here are the first five possessions. Touchdown, 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 punt, and a field goal. And that punt didn't come until one minute and 21. Like at the very that, end that's not good. of the first that, half. That's not good numbers. Exactly, and they led 24 to 10 at the yeah. half. But then in the second half, Patrick Graham got after those boys. Right, yeah, flip the script out. in the halftime. Flip right. the script, half came time. out. Ears are buzzing, you know. Shut out yes. in the second half. Not one point was scored by the Titans in the second half. And it started off in the third quarter there with the interception. So great performance uh, by the defense. And I think one of the positives you just point out, Deron Harmon, we saw him have that big hit of Marquise Brown, remember, in big the Arizona time. Cardinals yes. game. A timely play. Yep. That's a guy that can make some plays, yep, JJ. showing up making plays week after week. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't even watch the first half if I was a Raider <laughs> For real, I'm coming in here. I want confidence, <laughs> right? Hey, first half, we don't even know what happened with right. the first half. Amnesia, yeah. but I'm going to show you all the second half because this is the defense that we are, right? Yeah. Let's get after the quarterback for some bad throws and let's play some tight man-to-man -man coverage in those clips you yes. show that's yes. 55 coverage that's man-to-man -man with safeties oh, man. over the top let's go play some man-to-man -man. get up in their face and that's how you create bad throws. that's an aggressive call yes. right there you know it's third and long when be aggressive have your guys on the back end looking at the quarterback those two safeties breaking the ball like they did all right, so Josh McDaniels is still looking for his first win as head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. He had a chance to speak to the press. Here's his press conference brought to you by Yamava. Yamava. Coach, what were your thoughts on the performance that Matt Collins was able to put together, especially with that uh, punt that he was able to score? Yeah, yeah Mac, Mac plays hard on every play, you know, and, um, you know, it was, uh, I thought it was a great play that he made and then being able to reestablish himself quickly. Um, you know, to down the punt in there inside the five was, you know, it was obviously a great individual play. Um, you know, had a lot of single coverage today and made some plays in the passing game as a receiver too. So uh, Mac always works hard. You know, I think that's why he was voted as a captain and uh, his effort and the way he performs is, is uh, has been a bright spot for us for sure. Did it catch you off guard with the passes to Henry in the first half and then they kind of drop um, not, I mean, we were playing a lot of zone early in the game and, um, you know, trying to focus on the running game and try to stop, you know, limit that as much as we could. And then, you know, they were dumping the ball down there to him when we were playing zone. And I thought Tannehill made a few, you know, good reads just to give him the ball in some space and let him, you know, get some positive plays. I think the biggest thing with him is tackling. You know, I mean, you know, if they catch a short pass, you know, the, the biggest thing we have to do is get him on the ground. I thought he extended some of those plays, obviously, with his running uh, after he had the ball in his hands. I guess along the same lines, were you surprised by your struggles with tackling, or just what do you think were the biggest defensive issues in the first half? Uh, the, you know, without seeing the film, it's hard to exactly, you know, pinpoint a few things here or there. But, you know, I mean, it takes everybody. You know, when you're playing uh, a good player like that, uh, and he's obviously a great player, um, you know, you're going to need everybody to do their assignment right and to play tough and physical. And you can't guarantee the ball is going to go to one guy or another. So, um, you know, 11 guys are out there on defense. We all got to be able to tackle. We all got to be able to pursue the ball and play with great effort. And I just thought, you know, they had a good game plan coming out. They tried to mix it up a little bit. You know, Tannehill made some really good plays in the first half, I thought. Um, you know, and those things, you know, counter, you know, the running game. So um, just all in all is everybody's got to do their job the right way if you want to stop somebody like that. Josh, you made some significant changes on the offensive line. I know there were mm -hmm. penalties. Yep. But overall, do you feel like they uh, helped? Yeah, I, I did. I mean, again, I, I don't want to speak for I see the film. Um, but... You know, we're just we're trying to find the right formula, the right five guys that, you know, will go out there and play dependable and, and do it right over and over and over again. Good communication, get the protection sorted out, try to get a body on a body up front. I mean, obviously nothing can nothing good's gonna happen, you know, offensively if you don't do that first. So I thought they did a decent job against a good front. Um, I don't know at the end of the day, I don't know exactly what the numbers were on Simmons or, you know, uh, Autry or some of those guys, but I thought they gave Derek an opportunity to have some time to throw 
um, you know, once again, falling behind in the game, you know, I know we ran it 18 or 20 times, you know, wasn't bad in terms of the yards per carry, but just want to have a, a chance to get control of the game and run it more. But um, I thought they did a decent job of representing themselves and communicating and, you know, sorted out some things today for sure. So Josh McDaniels makes a good point when he's talking about the offensive line that we didn't bring up. We, did, we really didn't hear Jeffrey Simmons' name very much. That's a positive. That was the one man we had circled that said, you got to look out for Jeffrey Simmons. So it was a positive for sure. But now Josh McDaniels goes and looks for his first win as head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders against his former team that he was the head coach of, the Denver Broncos. So that is coming up. All right, we're going to take a break when we come back here on Raiders Game Day. A look at the red zone issues. We talk about things that could be better. We'll talk about it next here on Raiders Game Day. This segment has been brought to you by America First Credit Union, the official credit union of the Las Vegas Raiders. Day last week, Coach talked about execution and so forth. Just a fine line, isn't there, between getting it done and not getting it done? 100 percent, 100 percent. I mean, it's you know, we had a couple shots at it, you know, some big plays today, and then it's just a you know, small thing, whether it's you know, a receiver not you know coming down with it. You know, I have my foot on the line on the one on the sideline, um, or if it's some a little small piece up front, or you know, it's, it's always. It's always a fine line, like you said, so you just got to make sure you do everything you can to, to execute in the moment. What do you do to kind of avoid the snowball effect where you guys got to start getting frustrated now 0-3 that you can bounce this thing back? Frustration is okay. It's not It's not the end of the world to be frustrated. I mean, I don't think anybody in here should be happy and content with, uh, with, with losing. I mean, especially when you have the type of men we have in this locker room. And like I said from the very beginning, just because we're good on paper doesn't mean we're going to be great as a team. You know, we're still working toward that and it's still early, but, um, you know, we got to start establishing who we are as a team. And that's, that's, like I said, frustration is okay as long as you do something about it. Welcome back to Raiders game day. The Raiders lose this one 24-22. They fall to 0-3 with their loss tonight against the Tennessee Titans. And I think Devontae Adams will be the first to tell you uh, they're frustrated. He's not getting as much as he would like. Three catches for 36 yards. He did have the touchdown. But this is the week after he had two catches for 12 yards. Yeah. Those aren't Devontae Adams kind of, of numbers. We were expecting more of what we saw in game one right. uh, this year. So I'm sure he'll come to life. But the red zone has been a major issue. And and two for six in the red zone today. Six for 13 for the season. Are we starting to see a pattern that we should be concerned about? We hope not, guys. And this is kind of something that plagued uh, this team last year, getting in the red zone and having to set up field goals. Yeah. Not what you want to do, guys. I mean, uh, teams that are high caliber winning teams, right? Yeah. They do well in the red zone. Yeah, and, and well, what was that, JJ? Like, what was that right you're there? You're getting down there so much, right? That's a positive. Like, yes. we're in the yeah, red zone. Is. You think we're in the red zone six times this game. Like, you've got to find a way to get three touchdowns out of out of being in the red zone six times. But for me, we got to get a little bit more creative. If, if we have Devontae Adams and we're going to get Hunter Renfro back and we have Darren Waller and we have Max Holland, Mac Holland showing up, and all, we got to get a little bit more creative and get these guys in some one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's okay to do what you did today and say, Matt, go make a go make a one-on-one -on -one catch, right? I feel like we're trying to out-scheme ourselves and all that. And then when you get opportunities to make plays, you have to you make have to them. Darren Waller drops that one off his hands for an interception. You got him and Devontae Adams in the same area, and he can't find a way to come up with that one. So we just got to make the plays in the red zone. EA, no. I'm going to tell you your namesake yeah. who should be more important in the red zone. Right. JJ, the other That's JJ, it. the other <laughs> JJ. Gotta get him the ball. I understand we have so many outstanding yeah. receivers, tight ends, but Josh Jacobs needs to be a focal point in the red zone. And that's a really good that's a really yes. good point because a lot of people think even fantasy owners right when you get in the red zone <laughs> oh we got to throw we got to throw it's no. okay to run yes. that ball in the red zone. That's right. You see the Titans get down there they don't look at Ryan Tannehill and say but we tanning this thing off to Derek right. here it's okay to get a ball to 28. Yeah. Well, also from the receiving end Foster Moreau who we've said has been great for the offense he was the second best receiver in this game. Yeah. I mean that's not the stat lines you that were you want. You were calling out all day Amber. Uh, he, he, he was great he was the second best day. receiver he's a big 
big boy. Yeah. Go to him yeah. in the red zone as well because everybody's expecting uh, yeah. Darren Waller. So obviously that'll be an area of improvement that Josh McDaniels, you know, will be focusing on this week as they get ready for the Denver Broncos. We're going to take a break. Much more to come here on Raiders game day as we break down the loss to the Tennessee Titans. This segment has been brought to you by Twitch. Watch, discover, join in. We're so close. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of good things, but we're just not you know, finishing, getting the win. And it's like, you know, on the outside, it's, it's frustrating to get it. It's frustrating here. Like, we work our ass off every day to try to go out there and, and, and be our best. And I feel like, you know, we're on our way. And, like, you know, even though it's hard right now, it seems like, you know, the world's closing down. It's like, you know, we have a lot of positive things to take from it. What was the difference in that first two halves? Was it was 24 and then scoring You see something? Um, you know, I feel like just overall, deep defensively, we played, you know, better all together. Like, we just took a deep breath and just, like, let's take it one play at a time. And, like, that's what we try to emphasize. And, um, not overthinking, not overdoing, just going out there and, and executing one play at a time. That's, that's really all you can do. You can't they make one good play, it's not the end of the world. They can't lead to boom, 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 another couple big plays. It's got to be like, all right, whatever, and just bounce back. And like, we're on our way, and it's, that's the tough part because we all work so damn hard, and it's, we're trying to get it right. And, you know, it's got to stay positive in, in times like this. Look at that man's face and his chest. That's a man that was in a dog fight. And that's what we love about Max Crosby. <laughs> one of my Crosby. favorites. Oh, yeah, one of my He's favorites. He's positive. He plays with a motor that doesn't end. We like to see Chandler Jones get more involved. But yes. we feel like we're so close with this defense. And coming up next, the next four games, they got the Denver mm. Broncos. Ooh. Next Sunday on October 2nd, they come back to the black hole. That's back right. to Raider Nation. And hopefully they'll get that win against Josh McDaniels' uh, old team. Then they go on to play the Kansas City Chiefs who actually lost today, That's so that right. was good They're for beatable. the Raiders. They are beatable. They are beatable. They lost to the Colts. The Texans also lost. Uh -huh. After the bye, they come back to play the Titans. Titans, uh, they lost right to the Right where we want them. And then JJ, the Saints. Right where we want them. Right there. Yeah, who also yeah. lost oh, today. Right there. We come, we come, <laughs> hey, we coming to get the Broncos and the Chiefs. Man, if you ask me, we going to slap them both. Man. That's right. All right, let's take a do. look at our Monday night football pick them. I don't think I'm doing too well with it's it. It's all right. So, it's all right. Uh, coming up, we've it's got right, the Amber. Giants and the Cowboys. I know. You're excited about your low record over there. Uh, I'm going I'm going with the New York Giants. They improved to 3-0 at home because their third down defense is good. And the Cowboys have one of the worst third down defense or third down defenses uh, offensive in the NFL. We them boys. I'm taking them Cowboys. What? We them boys. I'm taking them never Cowboys. Will, I'm taking them Cowboys. Will, Cooper Rush never and Mike will McCarthy. go with that no. star. <laughs> it's all about the Giants. Uh, all right, Mr. Barkley. I got the best record. That's go ahead. right. Two and yeah, one. Let's Mr. go. I got the Let's best go. record. Gonna be He's very cocky this. about no. this. All right, coming up. On Raiders TV, <laughs> press conference is live on Monday. The McDaniels and Carr will have their press conferences on Wednesday. Looking forward to the Broncos upon, upon further review I'm podcast on Thursday. And Good then guys, the I'm show you want to watch, the Silver and Black right. Show right. with JJ and myself right. on Friday. You can watch all of these <laughs> on Raiders.com and on YouTube. They'll get it back. They're 0-3, but they're going to go out and get, get the Denver Broncos dub. coming get up next. We'll see you guys next time.